For Comedy Hype News, I'm Terrence Sims. Some of the most iconic faces of entertainment leave us wondering what happened when they disappear after giving us some of our favorite or funniest moments in pop culture. Sometimes the answer to what happened to them is simple as they no longer want to be in the entertainment or they want to start a family. Other times when our faves go missing, the answer to their whereabouts might be more unfortunate. Justin Pierce was supposed to reprise his role as Roach for Friday After Next. Sadly, he wouldn't be around to do so. Here's what happened to Justin Pierce. Before Justin became an actor, he was a popular skateboarder in New York City. Justin Charles Pierce, who was born in London, England, but raised in the Marble Hill neighborhood of the Bronx, New York, had a rough upbringing. After his parents, James and Meryl Pierce, divorced when he was 15 years old, some would say he lost his way. He skipped school to hang out and skateboard. He was stealing and staying out all night. Later, he would drop out of high school altogether. With his father absent and having moved out of his mother's house, he found solace in skateboarding with other kids who were like him. He moved into a warren of rooms packed with other skaters and runaways in a basement on 176th Street of New York City. Close friend Alex Corcoran, who grew up with Pierce in the Bronx, told Paper Magazine, the basement was the spot we called the dungeon. No one had any money at the time because all we did was skate. Justin had a room there and we all hung out. The New York skate scene in the 90s was an iconic era. It marked the emergence of the misfit. At the time, skaters were mostly outcasts from the rest of the society. Corcoran told The Guardian in 2015, no one really liked us, no one cared about us. We were a part of a scene that no one understood. Mel Stones, one of the few young women of the crew, recalled of that time, the crew was made up of kids from all boroughs, all shades, but pretty much the same income bracket of broke. We leaned on each other a lot and spent the majority of our time pooling funds from whatever hustle we had going on, going on to buy a dime of dirt weed, a Philly or OD, 15 heads on a single spliff, and mad backwash. It didn't matter. We would be on the streets or in some dive diner getting coffee refills to hide from the cold. Anywhere we could go so that we could all just stay hanging. Justin was the leader of the pack and often described as the glue that kept the skate crew together. His magnetic personality and ability to jail with people from all walks of life would become his legacy. Although he was troubled, he was charismatic and loved by many. Justin will go on to become one of the original members of the Supreme Skate Crew. Supreme is a clothing and skateboard lifestyle brand founded in New York City in 1994. Justin, along with his friends like Alex Corcoran, Ryan Hickey, and Harold Hunter, laid the foundation for the empire that brands like Supreme and Zoo York will become. Being a skater led to Justin's introduction to Hollywood. Harmony Kareem, a young writer and associate of the skate crew, introduced him to Larry Clark, a photographer and aspiring director. Clark and Kareem were working on a movie based on the lives of the young, reckless teens. Released in 1995, the film was called Kids, and it featured all of the popular skaters of New York basically acting as a version of themselves. Pierce had a leading role as Casper, a rowdy, drug-addicted, sex-crazed skate punk. Although it became a cult classic, Kids was highly controversial due to his depiction of violence and preteen sexual acts. One of the more difficult scenes to watch was when Justin's character sexually assaults the teenage character Jeannie, played by Chloe Sevigny as she lay unconscious. According to Harmony Corrine, Justin's self-destructive streak was not fabricated for the screen. The role of Casper was written specifically with him in mind. According to the kid's producer, Christine Vajon, Pierce had to be tracked down for a court appearance, bailed out of jail for a hate crime, broke his wrist in a fight, and came to set inebriated during filming. However, problematic kids helped propel the careers of Rosario Dawson, Chloe Silvani, and Justin Pierce. His performance as Casper earned him an Independent Spirit Award for Best Debut Performance in 1996. He was thrust into the spotlight as a professional skater and actor. Pierce went on to become the face of the Supreme brand, making an appearance in the 1996 VHS video Supreme Crew 96. He continued his stint in the acting, appearing in 1997 film A Brother's Kiss as Young Lex. In 2000 interview, A Brother's Kiss director Sean Rosenfeld told Paper Magazine that he met Justin through Michael Rappaport, who played Stingy. Michael Rappaport said, I had to meet this great actor, and then I started to hear all these things about what trouble Justin was. But I met him and he told me he wasn't like that at all. He was always prepared and a natural actor. Justin hadn't had the easiest life. He had a lot of wisdom for such a young age. He had an old soul, but underneath his tough street exterior was a really sweet kid. That same year, Pierce moved to Los Angeles to further his acting career. He appeared in the TV movie First Time Felon for Charles S. Dutton's directorial debut. The movie starred Omar Epps, Delroy Lindo, and Tretch on HBO. The next couple of years, Justin's raw acting ability brought more movie roles, including a part in Kevin Allen's The Big T's and more visibility in the skate world with the appearance in Zoo York's The Mixtape Skateboard video. But perhaps one of his most recognizable roles came in the year 2000 when he played Roach, Day Day's skater friend and co-worker in the sequel to the cult classic Next Friday. 
You might remember the iconic scene in the back of Pinky's record store when Roach, along with Craig and Day Day, played by Ice Cube and Mike Epps, learned they can suck their weed smoke up with a vacuum so as to not get caught getting high at work. Or maybe you remember Roach giving the Joker brothers dog Chico an edible so that Craig and Day Day could break into the brothers' house. Next Friday was the highest grossing film out of the Friday franchise. That year, Pierce landed two episodes of Malcolm in the Middle on Fox and a role as La Mafia in The King of the Jungle, directed by Seth Rosenfield. Although he was beginning to make a name for himself as an actor, Justin still struggled in his personal life. There were always rumors of drug and alcohol abuse surrounding him, and unfortunately, his role in The King of the Jungle will be one of his last. On July 10th, 2000, Justin Pierce took his own life in his Bellagio Resort hotel room in Las Vegas. His body was found by the hotel staff and Clark County coroner Ron Flood, confirmed the cause of death was by hanging. Just a month before, on a guy's trip to Sweden and England, director David Perez Shoddy remembers bonding with Pierce over shared life traumas. He told Paper Magazine, We all had something in common with our fathers not being there for us. We were talking about our lives and relationships. You could sense that Pierce wasn't happy. We were like, look, you have a lot to live for. You got a lot going on. We couldn't understand how he couldn't be happy. Kids co-star and one of Justin's longtime skate friends, Hamilton Harris, told Variety, People like Piers lack the support networks necessary to navigate the Hollywood scene. Many of them were runaways or people from traumatic backgrounds or troubled homes. They were very trusting of the filmmakers and gave a lot. And then they didn't have anyone around to help them or give them guidance while there was a narrow window of opportunity that opened for them. People like Harris have said that the film Kids and not being able to navigate the notoriety it brought is largely to blame for the the deaths of Justin Pierce and Harold Hunter, who overdosed a few years after Pierce's death. He also told Variety, we were in the right place at the right time and we become part of this cult classic film and had to deal with everything that comes with that. You can take a person out of the ghetto, but you can't take the ghetto out of the person. And to be ghetto refers to the mental and emotional trauma we went through. The year before he passed away, Justin had gotten married and was seemingly trying to build the loving family he never had. But in an interview he said, I'm becoming more and more bored in La La Land every day. He told Paper Magazine, people in LA don't seem real to me. All they care about is fucking movie stars. We will never know the reason why Justin Pierce ended his life when it seemed like the world was at his fingertips. He left two notes that were found with his body but were never released to the public. A service was held for him at the St. Patrick's Old Cathedral in Little Italy of Manhattan, New York. But a more intimate memorial was held by his friends at the public theater near Supreme. In a series of photos captured from their time together in the 90s, Mel Stone writes to Justin, I want people to know that beyond anything they saw on the screen, you are a fiercely loyal friend. At the time of his passing, Justin Pierce was just 25 years old. We continue to remember him, his contributions to the culture. May he rest in peace. Stay up to date with the latest news and comedy by subscribing here to our YouTube channel. Follow Comedy Hype across all social media and look out for original content on our new streaming service at ComedyHype.com. For Comedy Hype news, I'm Terrence Sims.